Fake, scripted and a bit of an embarrassment is what many viewers are saying about the first episode of TV drama series The Shire. While producers are thrilled with the response, after The Shire attracted large audiences last Monday night, Cronulla Chamber of Commerce Secretary Antonella Sanderson said it was disappointing to see the region, business community and its people unnecessarily tarnished as a result of a show which represented nothing of the true Shire spirit. Cook MP Scott Morrison said the show was cheap rubbish, which did not reflect the community we know and love. Photos taken by amateur photographers from southwestern Sydney is on display at the Fairfield Museum and Gallery until August 18. The exhibition, Points of View 2, features the work of 17 digital photographers from the MacArthur Community College Photography Group. Carmel Aiello said the exhibition gave the students from Western Sydney an opportunity to develop their skills. Basically it was giving the opportunity for students from the MacArthur Community College um, a, an opportunity to actually explore a theme um, that would eventually lead to an exhibition um, and the idea was to give them some professional development as well so that's the underlying theme behind it but in terms of subject themes I think with um, uh, and the inspiration for it. I think there seems to be the whole um, idea of a journey, uh, whether it's a spiritual or an actual journey. The group spent 12 months creating the new exhibition and have previously shown their work at the gallery with Points of View 1 in 2011. The stories that are the photographs tell are, are quite unique to each of them. They're all individual stories. They're stories of journeys, as I said before, stories of relationships, uh, stories about personal interests, stories about um, what it's like to actually live in Australia as well. You, you'll notice that the artists uh, in the exhibition are all based in Western Sydney, in particular the Campbelltown region, and there are images in the exhibition that actually tell stories of the communities and the places in the area to visit. For me, I mean, they're all wonderful photographs and they are, all have great merit individually, but um, I suppose like anything, whether it's photography or paintings um, everyone has sort of like a, something that really um, speaks out to them so for me personally um, I probably would say the two works that I'm standing next uh, to um, Aussie Skies by a photographer called Gavin Hardy I suppose that the thing that really got me interested or really pulled me to these images are the absolutely intensity of the skies in both of these landscapes it just seems to me particularly the one up top that you know the sky is actually a blaze it's actually got a life of its its own, it's full of movement, it's quite passionate and quite emotional and in a, in a really interesting way he kind of sums up the kind of the, the um, intensity of the Australian landscape and of the, the Australian elements as well so that's why I really like it and also it's a beautiful photograph. Teenager Jessica Fox proved again last weekend she is the best junior kayaker in the world, winning three gold medals at the World Championships in the United States and in the process successfully defending her junior world champion title. This latest swag of gold has taken the number of world champion titles in her career to five. Fox flew straight to London from the US earlier this week and says her medal haul is confidence boost going into the Olympics. It may not be listed as an Olympic sport, but baton twirling requires the technical skills of a rhythmic gymnast, combined with the grace of a dancer, and Jess Collis from Mount Annan knows a lot about it. The 19-year-old who took up baton twirling at the age of eight will represent Australia at the 2012 Baton Twirling World Championships in Paris next month. Jess says baton twirling is more than just a sport, describing the pursuit as a way of life, a family and a passion. The Women's 2012 International Youth Cup held recently at Blacktown International Sport Park had teams from around the country and across the Tasman taking part. Teams from Victoria, Queensland and even New Zealand fought it out at an under-19s tournament, but it was one local Toon Gabby girl that stood out from the rest. Pitcher Alice Donahue continually wiped through the opposing batting lineups with ease. Letting fly with pitches travelling at just under 100 kilometres, she gave her opponents plenty to worry about. I'm here today to play the International Youth Cup and I'm representing the Australian Aussie Green Team. It's not that scary to play in a tournament like this. Um, I do play other people in my state so they do know what they're coming up against but it's not that scary. Her coach, Shane Hughes, spent the tournament casting his eye over all competitors. 
Uh, it's an opportunity for them to show, show me what they can do. Uh, it's the first opportunity of the squad getting together and, and playing some ball. Um, and yeah, so I can see what they can do and I can get my game plan in action and they can start to execute. Castle Hill High School won the Hills Cup Rugby League Tournament for the first time in 10 years on Wednesday after defeating Marion College 14-4 at Parramatta Stadium. Both Hills District schools qualified for the under-18 seniors final after finishing in the top four of the Hills Cup round robin series and winning their respective semi-finals last month. Having trounced North Mead High School 26-4 in the qualifying semi-final, Castle Hill students were shell-shocked in the final with all the field and ball possession going to Marion College. After defending for close to 35 minutes, the team was able to make the most of their rare chances going forward and score two tries to lead at 8-0 at half-time. Marion College responded strongly in the second half to heap more pressure on their opponents, but Castle Hill scrambled well to concede only one try. Elite sportsmen and women often suffer setbacks on their way to the top and Ermington local Mitchell Chaston is no exception. While he may not be quite at that elite level yet, the 15-year-old has had his fair share of injuries. But it was one particular incident a few years back that almost ruined Chaston's BMX dreams. Oh, my worst injury would definitely have to be nearly breaking my spine at Blue Mountains. I landed on my back and bruised my tissue in my lower back. Having put the chapter in the back of his mind, Chaston has started to make a name for himself in BMX racing. Internationally, as well as on the domestic stage, the teenager is wowing the big crowds. Uh, the World Championships were really good. It was a different experience and it was a lot of fun. There were a lot of people at the World Championships. There was probably around one and a half thousand, probably two thousand there. And while his chance to represent London at the Olympic Games this year has been and gone, the two-wheeled speedster has his sights set on the Rio Games in four years' time. Uh, definitely make, my aim is in BMX would definitely to be going to the Olympics uh, because it'd be a different experience and to represent your country would be awesome. Three short films produced by one Parramatta arts worker will be premiered at Riverside Theatres starting next Thursday as part of an international film festival called Indie Gems. The producer, Armin Palangi, is the screen culture producer at the Parramatta-based Information and Cultural Exchange. He said the films were completed as part of a 12-week writing and editing project for Western Sydney artists. One of the films produced during the program was Fairy Tale by Marie Setiawan, which was selected for screening. The film centres on the complex relationship between a Chinese-Vietnamese woman and her Iranian boyfriend. Parramatta is a, a place where um, I think in the world is one of the most multicultural uh, sort of suburbs uh, and uh, sharing stories as well as uh, having audiences that are from diverse backgrounds I think enables and creates a bridge among different cultures. Uh, it starts an uh, intercultural sort of dialogue and I think the more of these stories are shared uh, the less um, the less sort of fear uh, sort of uh, exists among uh, the diverse religions, cultures and uh, ideologies. Festival founder and filmmaker John L. Simpson said a real highlight of the festival is Indian film homage to Mahatma Gandhi, written and directed by Amit Rai, will be screened next Sunday. Based on a true life event where um, Gandhi's ashes, not many people know this, but Gandhi's ashes were split up into 50 different uh, urns with his uh, desire to be spread all over the continent of India. But one of the urns was locked away by mistake and sat there for 40 years. And Gandhi's grandson discovered that the urn was still there. So once it was realized, he wanted to, to go on that final pilgrimage to, to uh, spread Gandhi's ashes. We particularly wanted to present an Indian film uh, to the people of uh, Sydney's West because we know we have such a, a very strong connection with India. The four-day film festival will include the winner of an award for the best independent feature film by a Western Sydney filmmaker who will be named on closing night. And that's all the news for this week. For more information on any of these stories, pick up your local Fairfax community newspaper. I'm Bianca Martins. We'll see you next time.